I know you need them. When you start to pray for something specific, I spoke to Dan today, and I want to give you advice. When you make up your mind, you pray for something specifically. Say, for instance, for change at your work situation, salvation of your family. When you pray for salvation of your family, when you see all of a sudden when you started to pray, they're actually going down. Worse than ever before. Do not lose heart. This is normal. Because when you really start to pray, there will be resistance in the spirit immediately. This is a sign that your prayers are effective. Do not lose heart. When you pray for a situation, and all of a sudden, the situation that you pray for is going down, it's degrading. Do not worry. This is a sign that you're facing opposition now. And that your prayer is effective. If your prayer was not effective, the enemy will not resist you. When your prayer is effective, the enemy will resist you. For a time, it looks like you're going down. This is where you need perseverance. Shake the guy next to you say, hey, listen. This is the time you need perseverance now. This is not the time to give up. This is the time to persevere because you know you have shaken the spiritual realm. Otherwise, you would not face opposition. That's why all of a sudden, you pray and things are going down. Not for long. Say, not for long. If you keep your faith in Jesus and you believe in what you pray, your situation will from there on lift up. But keep your faith. Amen. Keep your faith in the name of Jesus. Never give up when things are going a little bit, taking a dip. When things are taking a dip, don't lose heart. This is time to endure and have patience. Because you know your breakthrough is here. In the name of Jesus, never give up. Say to God next to you, hold on. In Jesus' name, hold on. God will never leave you. He will not disappoint you. He will carry you through. If the devil has stolen from you, he will give you something sevenfold better than you had before. Hallelujah. Awesome, huh? Amen. Say to the guy next to you, take courage. Saul could not wait. He was not in patience. He could not wait for the prophet, Samuel. Samuel was a little bit late. I mean, four days late is a little bit late, you know. But when you don't, hurry when you need to wait on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How late was Jesus for Lazarus' funeral? How late was he? Come on, your impatience. Four days. When he arrived at last, Martha was a little bit angry at him and a little bit sarcastic too. Lord, if you've been here, but you've not been here, I don't think you care, you know. That, that is what she actually meant. If you've been here, he would not die. But now that you've not been here, actually just saying, Jesus, it was your fault. That's actually what she meant. It's your fault you've not been at your place. For the human, God many times is late, but he does not fall in with your time slot and your watch. He's the eternal God. He's got his own time. He's got his own way of doing things, and he's got his own time. He's not worried about your watch. The people who are worried about watches never see the power of God. The people that worry about time never see God's work. They only see little drops. The impatient. Saul lost his kingship. He said, ah, Samuel is like, bring here that sacrifice. I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. Samuel came to rebuked. It was not his place to do that. He said to the guy next to you, you fill your place. Do not leave your position. Do not try and do another man's work. You don't do my job. And I don't do your job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God said to him, kill the evil king and all his cattle, 
You know, it was not New Testament. In the New Testament, the blood of Jesus is available. The blood of Jesus was not, not, not available. These nations were so wicked that even their cattle were wicked. Even in the New Testament, it says, those who sin in sexual sensuality and sins, even their clothing is stained with sin. Don't even touch their clothing. So it's not such an Old Testament thing. Oh. You, you think you score a luck when you buy a car at the auction? Maybe you're buying a curse for yourself. Ooh. You rejoice in another man's downfall? You as a Christian, don't touch that thing. In Jesus' name. It's not a bargain. You don't rejoice over another man's downfall. It's not a bargain. Hallelujah. The Bible says don't even touch their clothing. Do not even touch their clothing. God said to, to, to Saul, kill even the cattle. He said, no, you, there's breeding stuff here. There's a good looking bull, you know. A good goat. We can use this breeding stock into Israel. We can upgrade the cattle in Israel, you know. It was actually not his thinking. It was the people around him said, Saul, do we really need to kill this bull? Look at this bull. That bull was cursed. You bring such a bull into your herd, you curse your whole herd. Even today. Be careful what you buy, what you bring into your home. 